Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, the invisible hand of a digitized economy, and it's time for more Transistor. This is episode scrambled static noise of my Let's Play of Transistor, and before we dive straight in, I want to quickly mention that I have a Patreon now. I mentioned this before, but uh, several episodes ago, but I forgot to mention that, um, yeah, one of the things you get if you sign up is access to a whole bunch of secret material that I recorded ages ago. Uh, some test footage of Let's Plays that I ended up not making, and a couple of um, actual, like, secret practice Let's Play runs I did of Baba Is You and Diaries of a Spaceport Janitor, and any other secret footage that gets added in the future, any other practice runs I do to kind of get myself um, ready for a new series, any of that kind of thing. That aside, let's jump in. So, we're picking up where we left off, crawling around on the rooftop of... Um, I think this district is just named High Rise, which is kind of lazy as uh, district naming goes. We had a look in here the other time, and we found Red's apartment and some touching, bittersweet moments. Although, oh, let's read this first. So the word is out. Process spreads to 66% of Cloud Bank. If anybody's left to hear it. The entire western half of Cloudbank is now offline as central administration scrambles to contain the threat and relocate citizens to, de to designated safe zones. Casualty rates are unknown, though missing person rec reports crossed 100,000 as of this writing. Authorities denied foreknowledge of the epidemic. <laughs> Gee, this is weirdly timely, huh? Uh, and urged citizens to travel east as soon as possible and to register relocation requests at their local OVC terminals. If anyone's listening to the, the camaraderie behind the- town's being held ransom. Is anyone gonna- Is it following me? Is anyone even still listening? So there's something in the last episode which, um... Can't was, even see the canals. Was a nice little point that I want to come back to. Which is, um... Oh, red. Uh, well, uh... uh you know what, I'm just going to keep talking even though he's clearly going to be uh, mumbling for a bit because he's having a bad time. But, um, yeah, so there's the kind of the little gag of the uh, seafood flatbread being delivered in six seconds or eight seconds or whatever it was. Now, see, that definitely said that it was going to kill him, kill that dog, which... Nobody take that out of context, okay? I, I do not condone killing dogs. That's that's not a polite thing to do. Although I should probably summon my own dog, actually. I always forget that I have the power to make a dog be here. So, um, what the hell was I saying? The... I was talking about the thing about the thing, wasn't I? So the thing about the thing is that... Um, In all these little little hints and details, they indicate to us that this is um, not just a fully digitized society, but a fully automated society with all of the kind of implications that that means. By implication, nobody does work in this world that isn't a passion that they that they themselves find fulfilling and want to, you know, spend their life doing. And I believe that that's the case for everything, including something like Junction Jan's flatbread. I don't believe that there are a bunch of low-paid menial labourers working in this digital society to bring flatbread to the masses. I suspect it's all completely automated. After all, the process makes it very clear that automation of this world is is almost built in. So, given that, um, I like that they give us these kind of interesting archetypical personalities to learn about through the uh, function files. We get little windows into all of the various different idiosyncrasies of the people in this place and their various personal obsessions. Yeah, see, it definitely said it would have been overkill, but it was not. Can I avoid losing my... Uh, <laughs> I really don't want to lose any of my, my plugged-in abilities, so... See if we can finish it off. 
After all, the rooftop is the natural habitat of the dog, so it's natural that it's uh, an apex what predator up here. Happened? Here's a thought. Do the process take on these archetypical forms because, as Royce suspects, they are learning from the things that they devour? Um, and if that's the case, does that mean that they have been eating chickens and dogs and things like that? Is that a question that even makes any sense, really? We on your roof. Or do they perhaps represent something deeper, some kind of uh, mirroring of us? Although, I suppose the idea of a small swarm of iPhone-looking eggy things floating through the air, chasing down a dog and devouring it and then turning into dogs is at least darkly comedic. Anyway, I'll catch up with you in a second. So, I don't have any new limiters, but I do, in fact, have a fully unlocked story for one of these characters. Nicola Chain. Age 34, gender F. Selections, empathy and politics. Reasons cited, everyone deserves the best. One would have difficulty finding a more active or outspoken member of the community of Cloudbank's Gold Walk district as Miss Neola Chain. She allotted more than 66% of her available time on activities such as passing ordinances to improve underdeveloped regions, reaching out to and educating habitual non-voters, or advocating for groups lacking adequate representation. Her motives were rarely questioned, as her love for the district was in fact sincere, stemming from positive early experiences that grew to become fierce nostalgia. Miss Chain did have her detractors, however, and this became very clear at the opening she arranged for the Goldwalk Channel. The channel was to be a gallery space of sorts, designed to showcase eclectic works from those pursuing non-standard vocations that traditionally held little share. Instead, Miss Chain found herself accused of stirring unrest by calling attention to meritless perspectives undeserving of notice. The group accosting her was angry for 17 different reasons in total, including how the channel edged out a competing vote for a metro station that would have bridged the gap from Goldwalk to a neighbouring high-rise in one short ride. Miss Chain publicly lost her composure in this particular incident, which would have escalated further if not for several individuals who stood in her defence. They later offered their support with any such matters in the future. She agreed to meet with them, not realising who they were. The Camerata saw in Miss Chain an invaluable moral compass of sorts, someone predominantly driven by philanthropic goals and seeking no personal gain from her actions. This type of perspective they felt was an important counterbalance in comparison to some of the other individuals they had in mind, whose work was no less significant to the city, but whose intentions were not as plain to see. After her disappearance, those who knew Miss Chain reluctantly came to believe that the Channel incident shook her resolve enough that she decided to go away for a while to reignite her passions. So here we possibly get a little window into what the Camerata are actually doing, and an idea now just just now occurs to me that had never occurred to me before, which is that they are not... The Camerata were not disappearing people in order to remove them as a threat, although that may partly have been the case. You know, I... never thought much of a high-rise. Far from the water. Then I found out you lived here. There's such a deeply sweet tenderness between, well I say between, but we really only get the boxer's perspective, but a deep tenderness uh, for Red from the boxer. Anyway, uh, what the fuck was I talking about? I was saying that... Can I get all of those with that? Yeah. So in case you're wondering why those things are there, I uh, have a passive upgrade that sp uh, spawns one every time I grab a cell. Anyway, so, uh, my little pet theory about um, about this that has just occurred to me. Hmm. Average simultaneous users are 2.3. Well, I mean, it's not really big enough for a swim. It's, it's a hot tub. It's a glorified hot tub. Which is why the average users is 2.3, I guess. People like to snuggle in hot tubs. Um, I don't think there's actually anything to change in here, since we haven't used... Actually, there is something odd about the way the checkpoints are spaced out in this game, because they do seem to often give you two close together, which are not think anybody else actually... Is in here like, they don't have a combat between them. Me. Maybe that's to I've give you... I see you. 
And I know you can hear me. So, as I've said before, the writing in this game is... Going all the way up to the top of that tower out there. Quite beautiful. But... The quiet sadness as he wonders if anyone else is even in the sword with him, despite all these ghosts we keep eating. Anyway, what the hell was I talking about? I was talking about the tenderness? I was talking about... Yeah, so possibly the Camerata were not actually removing people... You can hear me, right? Well, once again, I've been interrupted by something heartbreaking and evocative. Um, I love the just quiet... What do you say when the word? The quiet, painful tragedy of the idea that he might have been talking, thinking she can hear him this entire time. And the insecurity, the anxiety that would absolutely kick in, because he's completely at her mercy. Not within her power, but he's completely reliant on her at this stage. Hey, watch out! Anyway, I'm going to skip ahead as I do all of these various side challenges because, you know, you've seen them before and they're not really that interesting. Um, most of them are simple iterations on the same thing again. Anyway, quick. are any of these new? Three of six, one of seven. Okay, so since I'll be showing you this one anyway so you can see what's, uh, what's up with it, because this is the first of this new type. What do we have this time? Just to explain this one quickly, it gives you a possibly randomized selection, I'm not actually sure, um, of functions and a small amount of uh, memory to use them. And then it's up to you to fight your way through uh, various waves. After each wave, you unlock new functions and more memory to use them with. It's not especially difficult, but it's broadly interesting. So, yeah, my, my little pet theory that just came up in my brain just now is um, essentially, I've started to say this about five times, but the Camerata are, rather than removing people who are politically dangerous to them, they are integrating people that they think are valuable to the structure of society into that society in a much more direct way. I think that they are perhaps pulling people into the fabric of this reality so that the nature of that reality kind of expands more in a way that they uh, think is appropriate or fitting or proper. Their aim is to further the development of this society and therefore people who are important to this society are being... Uh, I'm not even sure how to put into words what I'm thinking in my brain, but I'm sure you kind of get the picture by this stage. Which is that they are... The, that after they are integrated in such a way, these aspects of who they are as people will become some component of how the world works, or influence the development of the world in a sort of a subtle way. Anyway, um, I'm going to zip ahead again. So, yeah, um... Let's get back to the main game proper, but um, first I just want to shout out to the um, the eye iconography that you get almost everywhere in this game. It's not just uh, out here, but it's really common as a pattern on structures in the world. Don't know what came over me out there. It was like... Well, anyway, whatever it was, it's past. Feels like a me again, more or less. Yeah, well, you sounded like you had the flu, so... Like, I've been in that headspace. Uh, I've been low-key delirious with the flu. It's, uh... It feels exactly like how the boxer sounds. Um, but yeah, I love this recurring eyeball imagery because it both evokes peacock feathers, which themselves evoke the kind of um, roaring 20s glamour that the game's visual style is based on. But it also reminds you that you're always being watched. Even in uh, Sybil's secret, hidden getaway, you know, in these back doors in the code. 
even there you're not free from uh, being watched because the fundamental nature of your reality in this world is that of a of a fully digitized society this is where um, essentially the smart fridge paradigm is leading us as a society so you know if you don't want your entire world to slowly uh, descend into papery homogenized oblivion you should probably lobotomize your fridge is what I'm getting at Incidentally, people who take smart appliances and figure out how to make them dumb are some of the raddest people in the world, if you ask me. Let's grab this one. So, I'd quite like to expand my memory, but I think I'm actually going to grab a second passive slot so that I can unlock stories a bit faster. Uh, no new limiter this time, though. Now, if I remember correctly... You know I kind of miss those. What, what do you mean you miss them? When did you stop seeing them? Anyway, luckily I remember that there's a bonus combat back here. It's kind of sneaky the way they um, just hide some of these, you know. Ideally, you want to hit every combat in the game, so... It's very sneaky the way they uh, hide extra fights behind doors and around corners. Obviously, people who play games, and especially people who play games the way I play games, are probably going to be uh, grabbing everything ev anyway as you go, but um, I shouldn't have to. Well, that's slightly unfair. It's more that I worry I'll miss things. Whenever I'm playing a game like this, I obsessively backtrack through every corridor. Woo! Well, I guess backtrack's the wrong word, but I, I I loop around and make sure I go everywhere and see everything. Northwest. Towers. Which often I actually find kind of tedious, but I'm compelled to see Tunnels every single detail. Down. So even if this is a completely simulated society or a simulated world that exists only as a simulation, um, or at least on those kind of parameters, um, the nature of this society still requires physical structures to propagate it. So it's this fascinating blend of the physical and the digital. So we should have unlocked one more of these now. Yep, that one we've read. Time for Farrah Yondale. Age 26. Gender F. Selections, Meteorology and Chemistry. Reasons cited. Sky looks blue because we want it to. I love that line so much. I also love her look. Like, this is a woman who absolutely knows what makes her look good and has chosen to rock it. I think deep down we all want to dress like cotton candy. She was Cloudbank's first ever sky painter, someone who took the everyday occasion of the ever-changing sky and made an art of it. She worked for the pleasure of thousands, who remembered that they once took the sky for granted. Ms. Yondale gained a significant following as she transformed the skies around the city, and as her skill and popularity grew side by side, she started taking requests. One such request came from her heart. She was drawn to the district of Goldwalk where her suitor lived, and there she would change the horizon to shimmering sapphire for the solstice, and for their and everyone's sake. This was when her art became a liability. Administrative restrictions over the northwestern part of Goldwalk conflicted with the breadth of sky that needed painting. Because of her psychological state, however, Miss Yondale disregarded the restrictions and painted away. The result was stunning, as the majority of onlookers failed to find words to describe it. But because Miss Yondale wantonly ignored a front-page directive from administration, she was banned from sky, sky painting for a term 2.5 longer than she found acceptable. She petitioned for reprieve and came in contact with an administrator who suggested there were ways the term could be lightened. She was eager to learn how. Ms. Yondale's gifted command over a dimension of the city's physical and natural beauty caused the Camerata to seek her out. While aspects of the city evolved at a constant rate, the particular way in which Ms. Yondale approached her craft, with a strong, discerning, intuitive sense but with an eye for the wishes of her followers, created a particular disposition that appealed to the Camerata. 
After she vanished, close to 70% of Miss Yondale's connections decided that she must have fled the district to escape sentencing and that somewhere out there the skies still sparkle with the patterns of her choosing. So, again, we get these clear, interesting little ideas. But, as always, I like the idea that this is just the way their world is. This is not something they've done to themselves. This is not something they have rendered out of their natural world. This is not something... This is not a world that once looked like ours and has gone through some kind of digitization experience. This is just how their world is. This is just what it is like. Perhaps it's always been this way. Perhaps as far as they know, it's always been this way. Maybe we will never know. So, uh, after the next combat, I should have unlocked two new stories for me to awkwardly read out to you while my uh, COVID-wrecked voice tries and fails to give out. But I struggle through <gasps> for the love of the game. Anyway, um, which I guess is this game specifically. So, I'm just going to slot a couple more of these. Have I... Yes, okay, so that's the only one that hasn't got everything except the passive slots, so I think I may as well use this somewhere. Aha! That's actually a really good one to use with the uh, explosive packets, because the explosive packets just explode where they are and they won't do damage if something's not in the radius. The um, Installing get in it means that when it explodes it sucks things in first, which just actually lets you get a much greater DPS out of it. Anyway, I'm not actually certain when the next save point is, so I'm going to be stopping here for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Goodbye! If you like this, you can also follow me on Twitter for updates, stream announcements and one-tweet micro-reviews, or why not donate to me via Patreon or Ko-fi or just share my work. Thank you so much for watching.